What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to What's Your Story? So again, as I said last time, we continue this Springfield trend of people coming on, whether it was my buddy Mike, Dustin, Lou, Nick, and soon to be Zach. Now we got Adam coming on the show. It just We have such a good community of people over there and a lot of people that are doing big things, have that positive mindset that are always continuing to get better and wanting to get better and pushing themselves to kind of be uncomfortable on that day-to-day basis and just really trying to get better. So when I met Adam, he was just honestly in the weight room, but one of these most positive humans you'll ever see. He's always smiling. He's always hyped up. Um, so someone I definitely want to get on the show just to continue to push that you know, kindness, be positive vibe. And, um, you know, he's starting to do bigger things as he gets out of school with his coaching and stuff. And it's been really cool to follow him and just see his experience and how he's grew and just someone that I think everyone will be able to connect with and, and just bring a really positive message to the show. So at this point, Adam, I'll welcome you to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for all the kind words. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely, that. dude. No worries. Um, it was cool. Like I, I was thinking about it. I was like, dude, we got to get him on and just figure this time out because it's like, you know, just with, with – I think we have very similar mindsets when it comes to a lot of things. And, mm. you know, I'm interested because I don't know a ton of your backstory – telling your journey a little bit and then how you kind of got to today. So to kind of get it all started, it seemed like, you know, wellness, fitness is a huge part of your life and kind of led to where you are. When did all that start, whether it was your training or when you got interested in it? When did all that Mm. start in general? Let's see. Uh, I mean, I was always a very active kid. So like, you know, like sitting down in class was not my cup of tea, not my forte, dude. So like it, like first grade, through fourth grade, I was I was kind of a terror in the classroom. Sure. I'll be honest. I've had moments where I like, yo, know, like teacher. I, I had to go back like years later and be like, sorry. <laughs> you know, right. I'm something. Right. I realized that I was something, you know. I mean, I'm just I'm a guy who likes to move and it's hard for me to sit down. And sure. you know, at, over time, we got better at that. You know, we, we learn to sit down, we learn discipline, but took me a little longer, a late bloomer in that, in that sense. But, um, so, I mean, I think that just speaks to my, my energy and my, my awareness of my body and, and the need to move. So I think that's kind of where a lot of the interest in movement started. I just like to move. Yeah. And like, generally I, I just have like a general interest, a genuine interest in how the body works and functions. So it mainly happened in high school when I was, you know, um, given the option to take online classes and the class was an anatomy and phys class and it was online. It was, it was actually, it was, it was challenging. Like it took, it took me effort to definitely, um, a lot of time put into it and I was doing all the work on the computer. It was a little different. It was like the workload was a little bit more than an average class from my experience, but I enjoyed it. So that's when I knew I was like, you know what? I, I think this AMP route is, is somewhere I want to go. And that was in junior year. So I was like, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to go. Um, so I, I did a little looking around and like Springfield, Spirit Mind, Body, all the athletics focus was like, it just blared out at me. Um, you know, I played a lot of sports in high school. I I, I, I danced around a little bit. So, you know, I, I, I was a soccer guy for a long time. I was a basketball guy for a long time. And then I made kind of a switch in 10th grade where I started playing golf as opposed to soccer. So I really got into golf 11th and 12th grade. And then I made that switch from basketball to track after I was kind of like, you know, I was – I was kind of sitting the bench. I wasn't. I wasn't getting enough, a lot of playing time. I really love basketball. Allen Iverson's my guy. <laughs> I've always liked him. Was it because he was a smaller guy? Dude, yeah. I mean, I just <laughs> right. I resonated with him. Like, I just I just got him. I felt like he got me. You know. Right. <laughs> so like, I just emulated my game off of him. Um, but then I made the switch over to track. I was I was also I, I had wheels. You know, I had wheels. I was, back when I was one forty. So like right now I'm, I put on. 30 pounds since, you know, the high school days. So like 30 pounds is, you feel that on the run. So I'm, I'm definitely a bit slower. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I'd say I'm more powerful, explosive, but you can only get so much for moving that kind of mass, you know? Right. So I, uh, I put on some, some weight, you know, especially over like the past three months I was on, like, I was actually having like a non-bread pizza a day. 
So like I was having five, 600 calories. And that was a snack. It was a snack as I added to my meals. So I was putting on eight pounds for like a six week, eight week period. So I was, I was, I was on the way up because I was trying to, I'm trying to get up to like 175. But right now we're kind of back down because of quarantine and all that. But uh, we'll see if that, if that trip continues later on. So what but you yeah. Training. I mean, goal for training. Um, I've been limited right now just because of quarantine so i've been very creative with uh what i've been doing i've been trying to just keep up volume and work capacity um do a lot of circuit work like 30 30s um messing around with different types of bands dude i, I have some videos that are pretty hilarious trying to figure <laughs> out how to zert your squat with bands and stuff like that right so like i'll have to i'll have to get release those a couple times they're, they're yeah. like fail videos dude like Absolutely. Like trend on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have to do that. I might have to put the album out there. Seriously. Show, show the people. So when did you get into weightlifting in the first place? Because you're always in the sports. Like, because right. you, you obviously really passionate about your training and like that side. Was it more just like you you enjoyed lifting weights, or was there was there something behind it? Because I know a lot of people, for like mm. myself, it was an insecurity I had, and it, that made me yeah. feel better. Or is it just like sports related, or what was the reasoning for? kind of you think for falling in love with like training so much right I mean um like I said I I played sports growing up soccer yeah. was probably my best sport back in the day um so I just I loved running around sports were my thing um and then like you know like college comes around and you're kind of like mm, you know I'm not gonna I don't think I'm gonna do a varsity sport uh you know we'll think about a club sport we'll think about rec sports I don't know but when I was going into it like I, I was kind of into lifting I had like touched weights and we had just gotten like dumbbells for the basement so I was starting to get on the bench and you know get the get the dumbbells right. going um and that was like senior year so I'd started to get into lifting you know I showed interest in it but I really hadn't done it gotcha. truly um so when I got to college it was like doors open this is a new this is almost like a fresh new start Nobody knows me <laughs> and like, right. I don't have any pressure to, you know, live up to what I was or what I was known as. So it's kind of a new opportunity. And it was, ex I was excited about it, you know, um, generally. And like one of those things with the lifting, it, it just, it's, I went to uh, one of those, what are those, they call them the big club sport uh iron sport the team iron sports team iron sports yeah they, like i went to that club fair the club fair oh, okay like okay, yeah, everyone yeah. was there i was just hopping around back and forth and i saw like team iron sports and like how huge these dudes were and like i was like that's kind of dope like oh yeah i could i could go with that like i want to i want to <laughs> get big <laughs> i want to i want to get big you know it was one of those things it's just like i want to be strong i want to i want to be big i don't know but it, maybe I mean, yeah, I mean, potentially was a bit of an insecurity, you know, small guy, 140 pounds. I was like, you know, uh, I think we could list some weights to get a little bigger. I, I just want to be strong, you know, sure. and, and train and, and be part of something. So yeah. I was like, this seems like my thing. So I was like, these guys are my guys. And I hopped right <laughs> in. So well, it, dude, it, it makes sense. Cause, um, so it's funny when I talked to Dustin, cause we had, I did Dustin's interview is, he said it was such a cool thing too. And I could relate is like the, to your point, they like having your crew, like the weight room. I feel like there was a wild atmosphere we had. It was like, everybody was oh, just like yeah. pushing so hard. And to your point, you got like Rob Kearney, who's world's strongest gay. You got Nick and Zach on like the strong man circuits, like world's strongest man type stuff. Like yeah. the, it, the, the dudes that we were around are just like straight monsters. I like, <laughs> no. couldn't help, but like be inspired to like want to get oh, strong. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. It was great. Yeah. So, um, so you, you went there. What did you end up going to Springfield for? So I had uh, I got accepted to pre-PT. So it was uh, health science with a pre-PT, you know, focus was the concentration. Um, so, you know, fast forward in into, you know, uh, that junior year where you make the transition from a bachelor to basically a doctoral program. Uh, I mean, ultimately, I, I was just not quite prepared <laughs> for the workload and the intensity. And I, my study habits were not quite 
up to par with a doctoral program. That's the, that's the truth. Um, and so like, I, I just had a couple grades that were below that bar. So I, uh, you know, I had to basically leave the PT program. Um, so, you know, that was, that was tough at the time. That was really tough because I, I thought PT physical therapy was my thing, was what I was going for. Um, but there are lots of other opportunities and I have found lots of other niches. That's kind of what my thing is now. So, I mean, right after that happened, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop in and get some strength and conditioning stuff. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and uh, do some artwork. So honestly, it was a great experience when I got kicked out for, of the PT program. Um, I, I got to experience sculpture. I got to experience painting and I still do that to this day. And, uh, I've actually, that's been something like on the low key on the, on the back burner where like, I've been, I've been skilled at for a long time. I've always loved art. I've always had a great knack for it. And it gave me a great platform to really dig in and, and kind of rediscover it. So it was a moment of almost rediscovery through the redirection, you know? Um, so it was, it was good. Um, again, like the fitness industry is, uh, I would say for me, I want to be on the more preventative side, you know, um, right now PT is, is pretty reactive. It's rehab based. You've had an issue. We're going to fix it. We're going to take you from the basement and we're going to bring you to your ground floor, you know? I'm more of a performance guy. I like smashing ceilings. So like, I want to take you from ground level, from your basement, wherever it may be. And I want to take you to the attic, dude. I want to, I want to smash the ceiling. So that's kind of my approach with it. So I, uh, I love the training aspect and it's, it's more my thing. I didn't know that you, uh, I didn't know that about you with the art side of it. Did that start when you were like really young or you just like, did, and what kind of art are you like, just, like painting, yeah. drawing? Like, what was that about? Cause that's interesting to me. Yeah. 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 No, I, uh, I was, uh, I was always talented. So I, you know, I was in little art shows. I had little sketches, that's cool. little drawings that I did and I entered art shows as like a, a younger kid. So I, I've been into it. You know, I, I have a old, some old pictures of like, me with like a sculpture of like a king cobra and i was like cool man ah! <laughs> smiling it's by cool. it, like yeah so i i loved it you know it's my thing so it's interesting too i'm gonna go back to one thing you said with the school side because you found yourself a little bit with mm -hmm. like and started taking some art stuff strength conditioning stuff True. i think a lot of people can relate to this question is so you you're in pt things aren't going mm -hmm. as planned and you get cut from it how right. long did it take for you to like rebound and get yourself back together to like continue to move forward and be optimistic or, mm. you know, in general, how long did that take? And also was it difficult? Did you have like a low time? You know, how was that experience? Definitely. I mean, you know, for, to a certain degree, you have a, you have that hope, you know, that, Hey, I'm going to be a PT. And like, that's what you set your aim at. You know, uh, I, I have a, I have a knack for aiming high, you know, aim higher. So like sometimes that, that does set you up to be disappointed. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those things that um, aim higher because it brings out the best in you. And at least you can go back and say, I gave it, you know, my all, you know, right. I gave it what I had. So, I mean, I, I rebounded um, pretty well in terms of like action items. I kind of knew where I wanted to go. But I was I was genuinely disappointed. You know, I had I had a plan and it was going to be this, this and that. But that plan kind of crumbled a little bit. But what I didn't really realize is that, you know, I, I really think it's like the plan that I conspired in my head. It might not align with exactly how I want it to be. You know, I think, you know, there was financial and status plays that kind of come into play in your brain as you as you plan it but i just think my my natural inclination is to be performance based you know um and i think that's where where i'm gonna be the most effective you know as a person as a trainer as a coach so you know uh i've found that kind of space right now 
Um, I mean, so right now, personal training is tough <laughs> as we yeah. speak in quarantine right now. I mean, there's a, there's been a definitely a halt. So I, you've had a lot of time to process and, and plan and another, another, another bump in the road where there's rediscovery, you know, there's redirection, yeah. there's rediscovery. Um, but we're, we're doing great, man. You know, that's great. I yeah, mean, that's there was definitely, there was definitely a low time. It was definitely a low time. Like I said, um, but you kind of come to terms with the fact that like life goes on and like there's a plan for you <laughs> and God has a plan for you, man. Yeah. When did you start developing that mindset? Cause I feel like it's very easy to, to be the pessimistic negative view on it and like kind of give up on, and, and maybe like, this isn't going to work. It seems like you've been, even from what I know, you're very optimistic, mm-hmm. very positive, very kind of like, like you said, just keep moving forward. God will put me in the right direction. Just have faith yeah. in it. Was that instilled at you at a young age, or when did that kind of start coming to you? Think. Ah, uh, you know, I mean, I've always been real, like go with the flow. You know, kind of a thing is is kind of my my game plan. Um, I mean, in a way, I think that's that's part of the reason why you know the doctoral program was tough for me. You know, um, it's you gotta you gotta. It's less go with the flow, and it's more like, like you gotta produce, <laughs> you gotta perform, you gotta sit down and do three hours right here, right now, and that's that's hard for me. Um, there's a certain amount of discipline um, that needs to be established, um, and the habits. You know, we're 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 as good as our habits are. So like, our habits make us great, and you gotta have habits that are next level to be and perform in a doctoral program. So for anyone looking to go in a doctoral program, like get organized and and know what you need to do and and be truly focused on that and try not to get distracted. You know, um, if that's your goal, you got to be on a different level. So that's it. That's that it. That's my suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, so you end up doing, so you end up, did you finish an exercise, exercise science degree that we kind of finished with, or was it like a mixed degree? And then yeah, it was, it was kind of a mixed degree because that last, um, that last semester I took a lot of exercise science courses because my response was, uh, Hey, I want to do exercise science, you know, like I want to, I want to get that degree. So I got, I got into, you know, the exercise science realm and got, introduced to you know the teachers and got in like the uh the lab i got in um what else uh kinesiology i got in um strength and conditioning with ko so yep. like i got into you know the realm and i was already in the realm really because like team iron sports student is all exercise right. science so like you know really the whole time I may not have even noticed, but like, I, I'm an exercise science guy, you know, right. like, I mean, you know, I was, I was trying to, you know, perform above my ceiling, you know, that kind of thing. But in all honesty, my, my actions, my habits, my study habits didn't really reflect that, you know, and if I were to go back, if I were to reapply and go back to school, I think I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm disciplined enough at this point. I had a teacher, Dr. Wong. His, uh, he was our biology teacher in freshman year. And I sat next to my friend uh, and we would like, you know, kind of pay attention, kind of not, <laughs> kind of right. get, just get on the verge of enough good grades to, to pass and get enough to satisfy the curriculum. But he, I went to his office and like, I was like, yo, we need some help, blah, 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 blah. And like, he was like, guys, turn around. You rack discipline. <laughs> that's 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 it all i mean that's it all wrapped up in one it's like you lack discipline and in that moment i could have been like you know what i'm gonna listen to this wise dude this dude's trying to help me right i'm gonna change some ways i'm gonna get more discipline uh how do i do that but more it was more like yeah you know yeah i'm gonna pass i'll, I'll, I'll figure it out it'll be okay and i kind of continue to you know spread my you know, you can't, you can only tra- chase so many rabbits, you know? So, like, right. focus is like, like, rabbits running around. Like, if you chase them all, <laughs> you're not going to get any of them. Yeah. If you chase one, you might, you might have a chance <laughs> to get that rabbit or at least end up where that rabbit should be. 
Sure. But if you're chasing all the rabbits, you're going to get none of them, and you're not going to go know which one to go after. So, like, focus is like that, you know? Fix your focus, and you'll be able to achieve a lot more, and a, more than you thought you were capable of. The so, discipline um, is such a huge part, man. Like, uh, you know Jocko Willick? Oh, yeah. Jocko, oh, right? Discipline yeah. equals freedom, like his whole yeah. concept. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, man, it's crazy because, you know, it took me years and years of just this very similar to you is just go with the flow. I'm always going to make it work. And then, you know, it's like you kind of get scattered, get too many things on your mind. You're not really accomplishing much, but you got so many different things going on in your head. Right. But just the discipline of like creating that structure, you know, 430 in the morning every day. He's got his watch posted as on Instagram. <laughs> it's like, it's, like I know. Dude, it's, it's a black and white post every day, but it never gets old because it's just so savage. Like, and I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> You're like, well, I just look at it. I'm like, wow. And I'm up. Well, good for me. <laughs> I know. Right. And it's like that yeah. little thing. And he doesn't have to do that anymore, you know, but he's so built on that, that discipline. And, and when you have that discipline, you truly have freedom because you have so much more time. You're so much more organized. Like you have so much more going on. And I think right. that's something like if I could get taught that, at, I wasn't taught that really at all growing up. So mm. at a young age, like you said, if we had that, like everything kind of would have been a little different because of just the come out we could do. But right. it's cool though, because with your degree and stuff like that, how it ended up working out, it's almost like you got a variety of a ton of things and you came out with more mm. experience than just being like one dimensional. Um, yeah. So what are you up to now? Like, uh, like you've been out of school for a little while. Like what are you yeah. up to coaching wise? Like what are you doing now? Let's see. Uh, so I am at Marathon Physical Therapy. So instead of being a physical therapist, uh, I'm a strength coach. I run some group classes. I'll uh, I'll be a strength coach at the high school, so I'll head over to the high school at two, run the programs: football, basketball, baseball, whatever season, whatever is in season. We try to get them in for a quick lift, and then we'll get some off season guys too. Um, so it's it's good, you know. I, I like it. It's there's a lot of diversity. There's a lot of I'm um, I'm subject to so many different populations and skill levels because my fitness class is uh twice a week and they're you know they're my geriatric all-stars dude don't tell them i said that but they are my geriatric all-stars they're awesome right. you know? they show up all the time they're 60 65 plus 70 plus so like we've got you know we're just keeping them healthy we're keeping them moving um and making it making it fun and entertaining for them and that's it's it's a good time um and then again with the i'm running programs as well so like when i'm not at the high school sometimes there'll be an opportunity in the morning um like for a while there i was working with the fc stars which is uh some really talented young soccer players so they're like anywhere from like i think it's like six or eight to like 15 and like these these it, it was actually it was a girls team uh, and they were they were crazy talented. Like they had, they were unbelievable in terms of their their skills at such a young age. And I was like, wow, like I can't take any credit for any of this. This is not my doing. But like I can make them more resilient and you know try to do what I can to be an advocate for fitness and and work for their structures and kind of set them up to you know, be less bent towards reduce injury, you know, reduce injury risk is, is kind of the idea. So I would go there. Uh, it would be like a once a week program um, that kind of went into twice a week, but then went back to one. So like, you know, like they have, they have a lot of practice and like at that time, it's, it's not necessarily the focus is to be in the weight room. It's a lot of skill development. I would have liked to have at least two days a week. But it is what it is. Um, talented gr group for sure, um, and they're always playing soccer. So that's cool. That was fun. Yeah. How is it? How, how has it been working with like so many different type of populations? Like not coming out and just being like, I'm with a sports team, trying to balance, you know, seventy plus range to six year olds. Mm -hmm. So this, how's that experience been? I, I personally like I like it because you you see it in real time the the disparity the similarities. And it's it's pretty pretty awesome just to see how yeah it's a human body and it's bent towards a certain way because of the physiology because of the anatomy, but there's definitely I mean certain limitations to others and 
focuses that you know that need attend there's other attention to detail in one and then you kind of don't even need to consider that in a way so it's just it's just interesting to be like doing one and then the other back and forth cuz right makes you very adaptable and uh, responsive to the situation and the the person at hand. So it makes you very uh, able to work with whatever, whoever, and be very adaptable. It's good. It's got to be rewarding, too. Like, it's funny because I've had different clients that I've had. And it's interesting because sometimes you take on a client and you, you don't mm-hmm. realize, like, maybe how much someone's going through or how rewarding something be. It's like, as simple as, you know, I've had a, a client that's like, my goal is to just get off the floor. And like in my thought process, mm. when you first hear about that, maybe like maybe me t- like when I'm 10 years ago, I'd be like, oh, that's not that fun. But then like how grateful someone is just to help them move and stuff. Like that's what gets really rewarding to me. Mm. And then it's also obviously it's fun to get like a dude to get a 500 pound deadlift. But there, yeah. it's weird yeah. how those scenarios happen. We are like, wow, that was such a cool experience that I didn't think was actually going to happen. Mm-hmm. Have you had stuff like that kind of in a way? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, they, they, their idea of what they're capable of. I'm just kind of like, you can't like, you're capable of more, but like, you don't straight up say that. Like, you're like, oh yeah, you're there to support them and get them there. But you know, like you're going to blow them away. Like, right. and like, like that's, what's it kind of exciting about it is like, like, all right, we can get there. <laughs> we can get there. I know we can get there. And right. when they get there, they're like, you know, when I was first here, like, I couldn't even imagine <laughs> doing that. And I'm like, you know, that's why you're working. That's why you're right. working. With me. Like, it's, it's cool, man. Yeah. And it, nothing better than being able to be, you know, independent and just so competent in, you know, your movement and just what you're able to do. It makes you confident to no end so it's 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 good it's it's fun to see that you know it's directly directly related to just growth you know like if you get stronger you're you're getting smarter (laughs) you know and you just realize what you're capable of are there certain things you do on a day-to-day basis to like keep that positive mindset or keep pushing yourself to get better or like educating yourself like whether it's maybe some self-development stuff or, you know, whatever, because it always seems like you're, you're mm. in that. We've talked about it a few times with that positive mindset, that growth mindset. You're not really fixed, um, you know, it, whether it's meditation or reading or things like that. Are there things mm. that you do? I know you talked about prayer. Oh, or something, for sure. On a day oh, yeah. Days. Dude, for real. That's important. So, like, over quarantine, I've been really great at my routine. You know, uh, I've developed a great routine over quarantine. During the week, like when it's real time, when it's, you know, getting up at whatever, 430, 440, whatever it might be to train a client at six, um, it gets a little bit more abbreviated, a little bit more condensed. um, But I've just noticed so much freedom in getting up and the hour, the first hour of my day here's what it looks like. I, I get up, I go and grab my Bible and water. I drop a noon tablet in. It's like about 30 ounces of water. So I, I, I go for like 30 ounces of water in 30 minutes upon wake up. So like get hydrated because that puts you in, that changes your state. Because as a, as a leader, as, as a human, we have the ability to change our state kind of just like that. Like, and there's a couple of things that go into that. It's, it's renewing your mind with the word, with the Bible, and then getting, getting into the prayer mindset of how it's going to be what God says about me and just reminding yourself to be grateful and, and not take anything for granted and, and how you're made to be. And it just empowering. It, it gives you a power like no other. So you're ready for the day. And then on top of that, you got, I mean, when you're hydrated, dude, your, your brain just works enormously better. And you're, you're not tired. Like if you, if you get 15 ounces, 16 ounces in, I'm telling you, you'll, immediately kind of start to be like i am awake i am ready to go because that's what it is a lot of the the dreary drowsy morning stuff is i just am dehydrated like we need we haven't drank in if you're doing good eight hours if you're not doing so great maybe six hours but like ideally you've been sleeping for about eight hours you know so you're 
getting 30 ounces early in the morning and it gets you sharp. It gets you invigorated. And so that's like the soul and that's the spirit. And then we got the physical all kind of coming together. That spirit, mind, body. So that's the way I start it. And then I'll usually right now I get like a 10, 15 minute walk in around my block. So, you know, I'll go out there, I'll go shoes off, bare feet, walking. What's cool about the bare feet is that you feel the different, like, textures and driveways. And you're like, man, that driveway is nice. Right. <laughs> and you're like, oh, man, that one hurts. That one's like shards of glass. Like, it's rocky. Like, it's, it's funny how, like, your feet are so desensitized. But, yeah. like, they're very sensitive, let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah. So like, it's cool. It's a great quarantine habit I picked up. So like, first hour of my day is prayer, hydration, uh, and then walk, you know. That's so been awesome. good for me, man, is the like, so I, I've been on and off, I've had like a good routine, and I fall off a little bit. And, but the one thing that's been consistently good for me is um, like the long walks, like just going to the park, mm -hmm. getting out, whether it's music or no music, but just like a white walk, a jog, whatever it may be. Yeah. I just think there's so much value of just like getting away from everything, putting on, I'm huge on, so I'm a horrible reader. Like I can't mm. stay attentive when reading. I'm really mm. bad. So it, it, but I'm, I love audiobooks. I love podcasts. Sweet. I love YouTube. So like, love I'll just it. go Me throw too. like something positive on like a 20, 30 minute positive speech or a good podcast. And for me, that's like my make me feel good. Just kind of shut off a little bit from anything that's going on and, and detach so yeah. I just think there's so much value because you can get so like in a house, it's dark, it's gloomy, getting outside, some fresh air, just like it's, it's a game changer. And right. It's such a little thing, like not only like physically, but just that mental clarity. And that's what I'm learning so much more about mm. myself, where like even as a coach, there's such a mindset that you have to create into these people and a belief in themselves. And, they get, and you have to build that like intrinsic belief almost a lot of time for them in a way. Um, yeah. But through discipline, through habits and like, little goals and it's been crazy because i most talk about coaching people it's like all mindset now and i'm like hey we can get mm. a good workout nutrition program but we need to like start building some disciplines and habits to create you that mindset that you can you know start achieving some small things For so sure. i don't know how that works with you at all or how your mind works with that but it's been interesting how mm. my mind's transition to that a little bit you know yeah i mean yeah the another thing i'll do is i, I got a whiteboard so, you know, this whiteboard is oh, whatever, go get 36 I have by 20. Too. It's a it's a big board. It's like 48, 36, something like that. But you get that thing up there. You, I'm, I'm trying to learn, learn a word a day, increase my vocabulary, and then a scripture a day, you know, feed my soul, my spirit. And then on the board is kind of my daily routine, what I need to get done. I'll put a couple things that are kind of weekly. You know, weekly thing. Whoa, yeah, that too. You got to get that. And like, it's awesome just to kind of sit there and be like, okay, what do I got to do? And this is why this is why it's the morning, you know, like you set your day up and you kind of know it's about direction. It's about focus. What do I want to get done? What do I need to do? And you're more directed. So it just, it's just great for getting your mind right and set on all the right things, you know? If you could go back in a way, not take anything back, but give some advice to your 16, 18 year old self, what would it be? Hmm. That's right. That's right. I would say um, that it's, it's more than being liked by people. Don't fall in love with being, you know, liked by people being, you know, just a people pleaser. Uh, I think that's very dangerous in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it, it may be fun. You may be uh, very influential or be seeming influential to many, but you got to also, you know, take care of yourself first. And when everybody is kind of like, you know, affecting you or important beyond you know more important than almost yourself you you spread too thin and you just kind of make decisions that are to satisfy someone else and 
that's it. That's again, that's, that's dangerous. So I just, I want to make sure that, you know, you're doing things for the right reason and it's, it's for you. So that would be something I would certainly suggest to a younger me. Yeah. I love that answer because I, I think it's easy to not only to like society, like society puts all this pressure on you subconsciously to be something, mm. to expectations, yeah. to something. And I, I talk about 18, 22 and 30. I got it from Gary V are the three ages that society mm-hmm. has all these expectations for you to do certain things or be certain things. And right. like once you can stop judging yourself and, and, and just focusing on like, one day at a time, like just get better each day and not like you have to be married at this age, a degree at this age or achieve this at this age. Like yeah. You can start to actually focus on what makes you happy and not live off society's pressures. Exactly. And, right. and yeah, and, and, it's, and surround yourself with the right people, man. Like you, Oh, you for know, sure. And not letting in, like I love my parents, but their mindset when it comes to achieving more and doing more is kind of limited. So like, I it's can't true. not be with them, but you have to make sure you're, you're surrounding yourself with people that are always helping you grow. It's like, yeah, I spend time mm. with them, but if I spend too much, it almost limits my growth. So friends, right. family, like whatever it may be, it's it's making sure you're doing the things that really help you be the best. So you, to your point, so you're in a healthy state and can help other people. Because yeah, you're not, exactly. like, you're no value to anybody else. Exactly, so, for sure. Um, so I have two more questions for you. So in regards to um we're talking about mindset you're talking about like mm-hmm. impact like that so um one of them is what kind of imp- like right now if i said like what is your goal with coaching or yourself what kind of impact are you trying to make right now what would your reaction be to that that's right that's right i mean like i said i'd say my uh my motto my tagline is you know I want to encourage others to be the best version of themselves and smash their ceilings. So yeah. whatever you have put a limit on, you know, whatever you have called the threshold, I want to smash through that. And I want, you know, I want you to raise your expectation. That's kind of my approach, you know, as a coach, um, you know, and in, especially a time like this, it's like, I just want to embody the characteristics uh, of Jesus and and preach, you know, the word and his message, which is love people. You know, I mean, there's not been another time in history where the answer is, you know, love people, you know, love your the Lord, your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And that's it. It's about love. And that's the message of the gospel. And that's ultimately what I want to spread. And it gives me a great platform, uh, impact and influence through coaching. I love that, man. I, it's so true. It's, it's just, it's such a simple concept, like love your friends, love people, be a good yeah. human, just do the right thing and, and take care of, you know, everyone. And, you know, like you obviously have to take care of yourself, but mm. dude, I think so many people would be so much more happy like, if they simply uh, like, you know how good it feels to like, if you had the extra money to buy a coffee for someone or like shoot oh, someone yeah. a text message and be like, Hey man, I hope things are going well or give them a phone call. Or like, you don't know what could change someone's life. And that's when this whole like be kind thing came to me. It was like, Dude. I shot a message to someone I haven't talked to in 10 years. And I come to find out he has like a condition and it's really sick and all this stuff. And it's like, he literally is like, no one ever talks to me anymore because he's just such a, it's like, that's so sad. Like we just gotta mm. just be like, we need people to connect and just be right. better, man. Like we can do so much better and it's the little things. You don't have to do mm. much, you know? Right. And, and like, that's something that's, I, I totally agree with you with. Um, yeah. So last question I have for you, and it's kind of like a question I just asked, but nice. you can take this in any direction. It's not culture right. related. Um, I know you're still, you haven't been in the industry for a super long time, but you know, mm. I think I value your mindset a lot because I think you have a very great mindset when it comes to, you know, just being a good person. And yeah. so um, you ever heard of Tom Bilo on impact theory? No. Okay. So he asked this question, um, but I like to ask it here and there depending on the person that's on. Nice. What is the impact you're trying to have on the world? Like I said, man, it's about Jesus. That's that's it. So again, it's it's about just love and having just love break through everyone's heart that they kind of have like a cap on it, that they have put kind of a lid on their heart. So like love opens that up 
Uh, and, and then when you open that up, you're able to give more to others. And that's what it's all about. It's about giving, giving more to others. It fills and overflows and then you can give it, give it out, give it away. So, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. And, um, me and me and a friend, uh, Thomas Noah, 3G Fitness Systems. Um, we've got we've got a little little thing going on. So we're uh, we're trying to get a little fitness launch off the ground, where it's all about creating a lifestyle change. And I love it. Change is tough, man, but change is necessary. And there are a couple components to change itself. I heard this um, from my my pastor, Pastor Derek Fry. He was given an illustration on on what change like looks like and and what it needs to be like and it's like a baseball diamond so like when when we're trying to hit this you know this baseball you know in between the baselines you know between first and and home and, and third and home you got to hit it somewhere in between this this compassion realm and then this confrontation realm so like there needs to be enough compassion where we're not absolutely offending somebody and we're not causing a reaction inside that's just malicious, but we also need to be on the side of where we like confrontation, where, where we kind of like point them out and we point out the flaw and we, we address it, you know? So it needs to be somewhere in there. So like, again, change is not easy. It's not natural. It's not comfortable, but necessary all the time because we're either changing for the better or we're changing for the worse and right. at a, and that's never been more applicable now in in quarantine for yourself and also for for the world with the current state it's all about we need to change and how are we going to do it and it's somewhere in between compassion and confrontation and we just need to balance that out we need to I mean, hit that ground or hit that line drive right in, right in between right in between there and right in the gap I love, it, man. Well. Yeah. I love it. It's a perfect way to end it. Uh, I appreciate you coming on, man, you know, taking the yeah. time and, you know, I love your outlook on things and I agree if people can just do those little things and find that balance, uh, things will get a lot better for sure. That's right. This so, too shall good. pass, man. I'm, I'm telling it, man. you. We're I going it. good. Right, man. Well, thanks for coming on again, man. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you for having me, man. It was great. Cool. All right, everyone. Till next time, be kind, chase discomfort. I'll see you guys soon. Much love. See ya.